والشافع المشفع يوم الدين ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد حياكم الله dear brothers and sisters and they are listening to us to this talk in this town at this night which Allah Ta'ala permitted us to gather with each others to be upon one of the guidances that Rasulullah gave us when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Majtama'a قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا حفتهم الملائكة وغشيتهم الرحمة ونزلت عليهم السكينة وذكرهم الله عز وجل في من عنده يسوع السلام said there will be no number of people gather in one of the houses of Allah learning about the book of Allah except that Allah Ta'ala will mention them before the angels and the angels will surround the place where they are gathering in meaning to protect them from the shayateen and the mercy will cover them as well as tranquility will be descended on them and in the other hadith, Isa Sallam said that Allah Ta'ala at the end of the majlis will tell the angels, I take you as witnesses that I forgive them all. They would, the angel would say then, but they had so and so who is not of them. He did not come for seeking knowledge. He might have come, he might have came to uh, see someone for any other reason, but not seeking knowledge. Then Allah Ta'ala said, they are the people who anybody said to them would never be unpleased. So may Allah Ta'ala make us from those who establish such gatherings sincerely for the sake of his. And following the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَارْتَعُوا If you pass by the gardens of the Jannah, then ارْتَعُوا ارْتَعُوا in Arabic means spend the best time of yours there and eat as much as you can. You know, in the picnics, as the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam said to their fathers, Arsilhu ma'ana ghadan, yal'ab wa yarta' Yal'ab to play. Yarta' means to eat, not like normal, unlimited. When you, when you are in the picnic, you may eat more than the normal times. So the Prophet sallam is inviting us to this gatherings and he is naming this ilm that you take as the food that you eat as much as you can on the picnic now you are like in a picnic because as you see only calmness only tranquility only love that is here with each others we have no hatred we have no fightings we have no any enmity, but we all are brothers. Like if we are just on a picnic and you are seeking of the knowledge as much as you can. What the Prophet ﷺ meant by that means don't get yourself involved in anything other than seeking knowledge. Take as much as you can. Take as much as you can. Pay attention. Don't talk. Don't get, you know, busy with your phone. Don't, but focus and try to if you can't memorize, try to remember what is said. If you can't, then write down whatever points that are either new to you or maybe unclear to you so you want to ask about them 
at the end of the, of the talk. By the way, I'm somebody who's not that qualified to answer questions, but if would, I prefer them written. I don't accept uh, verbal questions, and I don't accept questions off table, meaning after we finish, please, no more questions by the door, by the car, by the way, by the corridor. Questions got to be here so everyone benefit. Private questions, you get the email, and for all at Hotmail. I L M F O R A W -L, L at Hotmail.com. Private questions, right? So the Prophet is inviting us to these gatherings. Today's topic is one of these guidances that Rasulullah gave us. And he meant us with it. He meant us, people of this time, people of this eras, eras. Not those, the companions. This speech wasn't given for them, rather it for us. Because he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who's holding Abu my Sunnah and the times where the Muslims where the Ummah go misguided and yani, uh, be corrupted, then he is the one who is holding the burning coal. He is the one who is holding the burning coal. Why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named holding the sunnah as a burning coal? Why did he name the sunnah and the truth as a burning coal? It is not because the sunnah is hot, so we stay away from it. No, but it, it is because at these times the haq is hard. The haq is hard for many people to take and carry. Today, many people turn away from the haq. The Muslims already exceeded the one billion number. The one billion figure, they already exceeded that. But how many of them are holding the burning coal? You check their hands, you see no any burning uh, signs on there or spots. Why? Because they are holding the cube of ice, not the burning coal. They are holding the ease, not the difficulties. And the Jannah is surrounded only with difficulties, as Isa said. While the hellfire is surrounded with ease and desires. Desires. So, the saying of the Prophet Those who keep themselves upon my sunnah when everyone is corrupted and their ways of worshipping, then he is the one who is holding the burning, the burning coal. And in other hadith, he will, he will be given the reward of shaheed, martyr. Because it is not something easy. To, to steadfast on the sunnah. It is not something, it is easy, don't take me wrong, it is easy, but for whom? For the sincere ones, for those whom Allah Ta'ala make it easy for them. As Allah Ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَعَلْمٍ مُدَّكِرٍ And other ayah, Allah Ta'ala named the Qur'an, heavy speech. Allah Ta'ala said as in Surah Al-Muzzammil, إِنَّا سَنُلْقِ عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا So in this ayah in Surah Al-Muzzammil, he Allah Ta'ala said, it is a heavy speech. But in the other ayah, he Allah Ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ We made Qur'an easy for those who want to remember. But for those who want, who want upon what? Sincerity. Upon sincerity. Because it is not only to uh, memorize the Quran, but rather to benefit, to benefit yourself from the Quran, to make yourself upon the guidances of Quran. 
But if you recite the Quran and memorize the Quran and you act away from it, that is not correct, Akhi. That is not correct. And it is not how much you memorize, rather how much you stick to the guidance of the Quran. As one day, I came to a mosque to give a, a lecture, to give a talk. And I saw the imam wearing western suit. That was in Saudi. Back home in Jeddah. He has PhD in engineering. And mashallah is doing good. Don't take me wrong. He's teaching the people Quran. This was a workplace. A company. And he was teaching people Quran every day after Dhuhr. Halaqa of Quran. Teaching them the good pronunciation, good, sorry, recitation. But I saw him in a complete Western suit with long trousers below the ankles. So I came to him, close between him and I, before Salah. I said, Assalamu alaikum. He welcomed me, mashallah. Once I said, Akhi, your trousers are too long, just between him and I. He immediately turned to me so angry and said, how much Quran you memorize? I memorized the whole Quran. You memorized the whole Quran? I said, Akhi, calm down. He said, no, tell me how much Quran you memorize. I said, Akhi, it is not how much you memorize. It is how much you act upon. How much you act upon. As the Prophet ﷺ said, how many people reciting the Quran and the Quran cursing them? Because they recite the Quran, but they don't go with the guidance of it. That's bad. Likewise, the Sunnah. That is the meaning of holding the burning coal. It's not only to know the Sunnah. Today, as you see behind me, on my right, on my left, shelves of books. Billions of books today. Translated in many languages. Translated in many languages. You go to the internet, many websites in any language you want. You open the TV channels, many Islamic, as they say, TV channels. Right? Where is the advantage? Why we don't see it on the people? Why we see this split and as a massive number of Muslims, but they are still, they are even more weaker than before. No one cares about Muslims. No one considers them. Why? Strength doesn't come from numbers. Strength comes from sincerity. And uh, serious stick to the Quran and Sunnah. How you respect them, how you take them. That's where the strength comes and power. That's why we say today, Ikhwan, that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who holds on my sunnah, the one who stood fast on my sunnah, in the times where my ummah are on the misguidance, they know or they don't know, then he is the one who is really holding the burning coal. It is difficult. Look at it today. You guys are strangers even amongst Muslims. Because you're choosing to be upon the Quran and Sunnah, people look to you as strangers, who they are. They are strangers, and they give you many different names. Sometimes they say they are Wahhabis, sometimes they say they are this, they are that. All of this because you guys want to be upon the Quran and Sunnah. We, yani, we say to all, Let's go back to a middle way, Quran and Sunnah. We, must, we are Muslims. The only nation has Quran and Sunnah is Ummah of Islam. If we don't go back to these inheritances, inheritance, then where is our identity? Our identity as Muslims is the Quran and the Sunnah. How far we are with it. How far we are with it. That's how we need to be, Ikhwan. So, 
To hold on the burning coal means to hold on the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. To hold on the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam means you be upon the, as he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when he described the nations, he said that the Yahud were split into seventy one groups, one in the Jannah and seventy in the Hellfire. The the Nasara, the Christians, split it into seventy two groups, one in the Jannah, seventy one in the fire. This one from the who? This one of the Nasara, finished. Not today. No more today. No more. Don't think that there's still one one B until today. No, 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 no more. This one was during the lifetime of their prophets and messengers, but not after Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent. After Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent, it is either Islam or hair fire. No way. As he صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "والذي نفسي بيده لا يسمع بي أحد من هذه الأمة يهوديا كان أو نصرانيا ثم لا يؤمن بي." There will be no one of this ummah. Ummah means whole mankind living from the time of Muhammad Sallallahu until the day of resurrection. All of them. And then he said, whether he is Christian or Jew, and he does not believe in me, Allah will put him in the fire. Means. No religion to be accepted after Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent, but Islam. But Islam, as Allah Taala said, "وَمَا يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ." Whoever wishes to take other religion other than Islam, then it is not going to be accepted from him. And this Islam is the Islam that Allah Taala sent Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم with, as He said. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. so that is the religion. this ayah was descended at the end of the life of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. it was in حجة الوداع in the day of on the day of عرفة. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم left uh, lived after that around four months or three months, and then he passed away. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this means that Islam is only what he was upon, as he saw Sallam said. Then, continuing the hadith of the split of the nations, he said, "And my ummah, well split." Is this in use? That can be true or false, or it is a revelation. Aikhwan. What is it you think? Revelation, right? Because Allah said, لا ينطق عن الهوى. He, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, never speak out of his own desire. إنما هو وحي يوحى. But he is only a revelation revealed to him. So he said it, and it must, as what he said about the previous nations, is a revelation also. He did not see the Yahud, he did not see the Nasara, all. But he was told that these divided into 71, and these divided into 72. Allah told him, and Allah told him, your Ummah will divide in 73 groups. We want or we don't. We accept or we don't. This is the fact. Many calls today, let's unite, let's unite. Good to unite, but upon what? Upon what? Upon whatsoever, but let us all be one against America. No, Akhi. We want to be all one against the shaitan first. And we can't be one against the shaitan until we be one upon the Quran and the Sunnah. We can't be one. While our aqidah is different, while our practicing is different, one on the sunnah, one on the bid'ah. One worships Allah, one worships the grave. 
One, follow Muhammad. One, follow his own imam and desire. And that's it. You tell him this is the saying of Muhammad. He said, but I have my own imam. So how come we unite? We only unite Abu the Haq. Whoever accepts the Haq is our brother. Who doesn't accept the Haq? We are not so worried about him. So, uh, Ikhwan, I don't want to hold you too long. Although tomorrow is Saturday and your day off, but I'm sure you've been working today and been hard for you to stay longer. But the reason and the purpose for such talks to emphasize this type of hadith, holding the burning coal, many people will get, you know, confused. Why Rasulullah Sallam named the Sunnah burning coal? Because it is as difficult as holding the burning coal today. That is the meaning of it. It does not mean that it is as warm as the burning coal, but it means that it, holding the Sunnah is as difficult as holding the burning coal at these times. At these times. And we all can see it. And we all can see it amongst the Muslims. Once you say Quran and Sunnah, yes, everyone raises this. Raises this. Those who pray the graves, they raise it. They say Quran and Sunnah. But when you come to the practical, you don't find them. On the okay, the Prophet Sallam said in, in the in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim, and even in Bukhari and in the Sunan, that the curse of Allah be upon those who take the graves of their prophets are as places of worship. Today they are not only the graves of the prophets, but graves of anybody. <coughs> graves of anybody. So how come we are holding on the burning coal? We are not. Except for those who are seriously are on the uh, sunnah. And as I told you, the Prophet Wasallam said in one hadith that that person, as he saw Salam described them, he said those who correct themselves, who correct themselves when the people are found wrong. Meaning in the way of worshipping. You know the haqq, you don't go with the masses. Oh, my people doing this, I go with them, I don't want to be seen different. La, la. Be upon the sunnah and jama'ah. What is jama'ah? What is the jama'ah? Ibn Mas'ud said, the jama'ah is what has heard the haqq even if you were alone. Even if you were alone. Whole world on one side and you are one side, but you are 100% sure that you are upon the haqq because you see the Quran and sunnah and others only give you their opinions and the opinions of their shiuch. Then how come you leave? But you are so certain that it is from Rasulullah for what is from others. That's not correct. As Imam Malik said, Rahimahullah, the Imam of Dar al Hijra, he said, لا يصلح هذه آخر هذه الأمة لا يصلح آخر هذه الأمة إلا بما صلح به أولها. The end of this Ummah, look, Imam Malik is only on the third century of this Ummah. Third generation, third generation. He's from Atba'at Tabi'een. And he is telling us this, he said, By Allah, nothing can correct the end of this Ummah except the same thing that corrected the first. What corrected the first? It is holding the Quran and the Sunnah, Tawheed. That is as Allah Ta'ala said, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا And hold fast on the robe of Allah, you all. What is the robe of Allah? The Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah. So we need to be always upon the Quran and the Sunnah. And the Quran and the Sunnah, some of our youth Come to understand something strange. They say, Alas, we don't take no statement of any alim. We just go to the Quran and read it and understand. We go to the Sunnah, read it and understand, and that's it. So instead of we have 
So instead of, we, uh, yani we have certain number of imams, like maybe millions, alhamdulillah, we have thousands of imams in the history of Islam. But now we have millions. Why? Because every young person, every person wants to be the imam of his. He can go to the Quran and take what he understands. La, that's wrong. It is the Quran and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu How they understood it. We have to go by their understanding. Because they were the perfect ones after the prophets and messengers. So we see how did they understand the Quran and the Sunnah. And then we understand it and take it the way they did. Not to go independently and take the Quran and read it and say we understood it. Okay, what do you understand? He understood this way. This one understood this way. That understood this way. That's wrong. That's wrong. If we understand the Quran and the Sunnah properly, it never leads us to deviations and split. But it brings us to unity. It brings us to unity. So, the Akhwan, holding on the burning coal means to hold on the Sunnah. The holding on the Sunnah it means that you correct your actions, your sayings, on two things. You always have two questions asked to yourself. Ask to yourself. First one, before you say or do anything, ask yourself why I am doing it. Is it for the sake of Allah? Is it sincerely? Or I just want to show that I have knowledge or I, I am the one. If this is the, 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 the fact, then fear Allah and go back as you are going on the misguidance. And the shaitan now is leading you. Because that's what he wants. He wants you to uh, show off. He wants you to be unsincere with your Lord. And any worship based on insincerity is not going to be accepted. And not only that, it's going to be punished severely. Because there now, the person is practicing shirk. Practicing shirk. Because shirk is not necessarily to worship the grave. Because many people think that shirk is only to worship idol or grave or la la. Allah Ta'ala said, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهَهُ هَوَا Have you not seen the one who took his own desire as his God? So he does what his desire tells him. That's a problem. So first of all, you examine your intention before you do, not after. Because as they say, the word, you own it before it comes out of your mouth. But once it comes, it owns you. It owns you then. So before you do anything, ask yourself, why I'm doing it? For the sake of Allah, good. Now, number two, examine it. Is it on the sunnah of Rasulullah Oh, I can't, I can't know now. Then don't do it, wait. Don't do it, wait. Yeah, but many people doing it. Don't take your religion from many people. You take your religion from one man, Muhammad Sallallahu Don't take your religion from many people. This religion is not a religion of uh, numbers. But it is a religion of revelation. So you go back to the sunnah and see. As... It is said, where, yani, uh, as it is said, that Allah Ta'ala does not accept no worshipping action or saying, except if it is sincerely, yani, khalisan, sincere, and sawab, means right upon the sunnah of Rasulullah Sunnah of Rasulullah And Allah Ta'ala concluded that all as in Surah uh, uh, An-Nisa. Allah Ta'ala said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ 
ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم say oh Muhammad to them all if you love Allah you all claim that you love Allah okay if you love Allah prove it how can I prove it Allah Ta'ala told you فاتبعوني love Allah means you are sincere you claim we cannot examine your sincerity no one can examine the sincerity of no one it's only Allah who can know who is the sincere ones of us who are not may Allah Ta'ala make us all from those who are sincere and protect our intentions from uh, going for any other than Allah but what we can examine is your adherence to the Sunnah your adherence to the Sunnah this we can see in the book of Hadith and we can see you if you are doing as the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu or not so my dear brothers and sisters if you want to be from those who are promised by this great reward those who hold up on the burning coal but this burning coal does not burn them by the way they hold the burning coal but the burning coal does not burn them why because they are very good slaves of Allah the Lord of the of the of the of the fire and the burning coal and as Allah Ta'ala commanded the fire of Ibrahim not to burn Ibrahim alayhi salam قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيم not only not only burden as the ulama said Allah Ta'ala said O oh fire be cold and peace for Ibrahim now the ulama said if Allah Ta'ala just said be cold Ibrahim would, would freeze but Allah Ta'ala said, and be peaceful, peace for Ibrahim. So Ibrahim came walking out of this fire. Fire! They said that uh, a month they were fueling it. For one whole month they were fueling it. Up to limits that the birds flying on air full burned because of the heat. But Ibrahim came off walking. So imagine that. And who did this? Cannot make you hold the burning coal and not been burned? Yes, Allah can. So holding the sunnah is like holding a flower. This burning coal is like a flower. Like a flower to you. But it is at the same time, it's hard because you might be alone. You might be seen alone. Many people, and they said, Akhi, I want to convey my da'wah. I want to conduct my da'wah. But I don't have any uh, masjid. Nobody except me. Except if I be with them. I be with the Ahlul Bid'ah. No problem. Just be with them. Until I get strong. And nah, nah, this is wrong, Akhi. This is from the ways of deception of shaitan. He drags you little, little. Cooperate with them on the haq. And then... Correct them. Who can guarantee that you don't be with them? Be careful, Ikhwan. Sometimes the shaitan, shaitan doesn't always come until you take this bottle of khamr. No, no. Shaitan is not a stupid, Ikhwan. Shaitan will never come to the masjid with a bottle of khamr until the imam drink this. He knows that the imam will not drink it. Because the imam knows that this is khamr. So how he comes to the imam, there is a book compiled by Ibn al-Jawzi, not Ibn al jawziya Ibn al jawzi Abu al-Faraj Ibn al jawzi called Talbis Iblis. He shows there the tricks of shaitan, even to the big ulama, coming down to the very common person. You will see many different tricks of the shaitan. Many different tricks of the shaitan. He does not deal with people the same level. He look, he first of all study you. Shaitan wants to misguide you, he come and see what thing you like. What thing you like. And then he starts from there little, little. Little, little. Until he gets you. If he cannot take you to the shirk, at least he puts you in the bid'ah. If he cannot take you to the bid'ah, at least he makes you lazy in worship. Look at that. Look at that. 
Or maybe he makes you exceed the Sunnah of Rasulullah in forms of worshipping, like the Khawarij. Rasulullah when he talked about the Khawarij, he said to the Sahaba, one of you will see his worship like nothing compared to the worship of the Khawarij. They, Ibn Abbas, when he went debating them, he returned back and he said, wow, these people are worshippers. All the time reading Quran, standing and standing. But Rasulullah said they read the Quran, but the Quran doesn't even go above the uh, throat bone of their chests. Why? Because they are about misguidance. It's not how you, it is how you hold the sunnah. And be careful, Akhwan. Our main enemy is the shaitan. The shaitan is always alert with you. He is planning, planning, planning. Never leave you alone. Never leave you alone. And that's why Allah Ta'ala made it obligated upon us all to ask him guidance. 17 times a day minimum. Count with me. You recite Surah Al-Fatiha twice in Fajr. Four in Dhuhr, this is six. Four in Asr, this is ten. Three in Maghrib, this is thirteen. And four in Isha, that is seventeen. Seventeen times you say, Ihdin al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Have you ever thought about this statement? Have you ever said it with, you know, present heart, present mind? Thinking that I'm... I need the guidance. I need more guidance. That's why Allah Ta'ala made it obligatory upon us to recite this ayah, this surah which contains this ayah 17 times a day. Because we all need the guidance, not only until we are Sunni or Salafi or la, until we die. Until we die. And that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not anyone, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sujood, he used to be here saying many times, many times, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbat qalb ala deenak. Imagine that. The one who is sent is feeling that Allah Ta'ala turns his heart. The one who is sent with the guidance, with the truth, is scared that Allah Ta'ala may turn his heart. From guidance to misguidance? What about us? Ya Ikhwan, today we are so yani, convinced like if we are khalas getting the keys of the Jannah in our pockets. That's a problem today, Ya Ikhwan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on many occasions on the night prayers he used to say, Allahumma rabba Jibra'il wa Mika'il wa Israfil, فاطر السماوات والأرض عالم الغيب والشهادة أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدني لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم. He used to say this dua of opening of the prayers in the night prayers. How often we say it? How often we say it? Take it seriously from me. We are way, way, way behind this. We very rarely go back to Allah and ask guidance like if we really need it. But we always think that, oh, we are the ones who are guided. We are the ones upon the sunnah. We are, others are, akhi, you ask. Protection is only from Allah. May yahdi Allahu fahu al And Allah Ta'ala in the Hadith Qudsi says, Ya ibadi kullukum dalun illa man hadaytu wa fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my slaves, you all are misguided. So ask me guidance, I'll provide it to you. And you need to keep asking him until you die. You cannot guarantee that you are succeeding until you die. Until you die. Not before that. Never be before that. May Allah Ta'ala... Keep us all up on the sunnah and make us from those who are holding the burning coal and provide us the reward of those who are holding the burning coal. May Allah Ta'ala make us upon the tawheed of His subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
May Allah Ta'ala purify our intentions to be for His alone. May Allah Ta'ala purify our actions and sayings to be only said and, uh, and, and done for Him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah Ta'ala make uh, all of our deeds, righteous deeds, upon the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahu Ta'ala A'lam wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Barak ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alaihi Wasallam.